Hello everybody, my name is Ghostbit, and today we are starting our very first uh, episode in a long series on making our very first game in Godot. I'm going to walk you step by step on how to go about doing this, and we're going to make a very uh, very simple game here. Now, I assume you have the latest version of Godot 3.4. Um, you don't really need the latest version, but that's what I have downloaded on my end. Um, and I also assume you know how to do that. Uh, in case you don't, I will leave a link down below to go ahead and download that for you. Uh, the website to provide for that. Now, the first thing you want to do is click on the Godot, launch the application. And then you're going to be shown in this little fancy window here. And we're going to click on New Projects. And then in here, we're simply going to set up where our project path wants to be we do with that first and i have my own section on where i'm going to go ahead and do this uh go feel free to make your own version uh just make a folder under documents or it could be in your desktop and simply call it godot and then underneath that just call it like video games um, or tutorials whatever you feel like it um, you don't have to exactly call it tutorials <laughs> anyways the next thing we're going to do is going to call it Plinko we are making Plinko uh, if you know what that is that's amazing uh, if you don't uh, it's fine I'll walk you through it you'll get to see it or maybe you'll see it in the thumbnail and then you, what you want to do is do underscore game now it's very very important and this is a very good uh, very uh, useful tip you always want to do underscore when you're naming your games. You never want to actually hit space because um, in the long run that might mess you up or it might lead you to an error that you will have no clue how to fix it and then the error is coming from the title itself. So rule of thumb, always underscore, never actually space. So that's why we did Plinko underscore uh, game. Uh, that tip comes from acro projects <laughs> acro if you're watching this that tip goes out to you thank you very much <laughs> anyways not once you have that set up uh underneath here uh we have open gles 3.0 automatically uh, clicked on um and then the option number two here is open gles 2.0 basically uh it explains uh which version you would like to do it in by default, I always go with 3.0, despite what it says here. Not recommended for web games. Um, I've had little to no issue. I've produced many web games under 3.0, and I've had little to no issues. Um, I've never really done 2.0, um, only because this part scares me, the lower visual quality. Um, again, I've done, I've done 3.0 on most of my games, and... I've encountered no issues at all. So we're going to go ahead and leave it like that. And we're going to hit create and edit. And that's going to launch our window here. So now let's get started. Um, let's go ahead and hit 2D. Because uh, we're not going to do 3D. We're going to do 2D. And that takes us to a 2D space. And the first thing we're going to be staring at is a purple box. I'm not, if you see this purple box going along this green line and red line, this purple box represents our window screen. So if we ever hit play, which is this button right here, uh, it's going to show us whatever's in this purple box. Um, it's going to turn gray, but that's basically it's going to show us nothing because we don't have nothing yet. So we are going to run an example uh, to explain the Godot node system. Uh, we are going to do a background image color. And a, and, a, and a sprite uh, of the Godot notes of uh, the Godot logo so that way we can explain what the node system is so the first thing is a scene what is a scene it is basically a collection of Godot nodes basically it's a collection of nodes um, and we have four options we have a 2d scene we have a 3d scene and we have user interface and we have other nodes. Now, throughout this whole series, we're going to be going over 2D user interface and other nodes. We won't be going over 3D scene because I'm not I'm not qualified to go over that. But if you are interested, I know someone who is, let me know. So moving on, uh, we're going to go ahead and click 2D scene because that's what we want for this example. Click on that and boom, it's going to create... And it's going to transform and it's going to say node 2D. Now, a node 2D is just basically a container that holds a bunch of other nodes, just like the scene. That is why it is classified as a 2D scene. That's why it gets that fancy label. Um, let's go ahead and click on that. And the, so a node is basically a container or a, a container that has a special ability. 
each node can do something very unique uh, than another node. And if you combine certain nodes together, you can make a video game. That's <laughs> that's how I interpret what a node it is. It is. Uh, that's the basic of it. Uh, that's stripping it down and putting it in basic terms is each node has a special ability to do something to help you along in making your video game. So uh, it is our job to find which nodes we need to construct, put together, so that way we can make our game. So uh, we are going to do our first example for that, and we are going to make uh, a simple image with a background. It's very easy to do. Um, so if you're staring at this, it is, it is titled the parent node. And then underneath the parent node, while it's highlighted, we can assign children. If you hit this plus button right here, it says add child node. And if you hit that uh, plus button, it leads into a big listing of nodes. And now this is insane. You don't need to learn all the nodes. It, uh, that, that'll that be bananas if you ever do, by the way. Um you are a beginner and you need to only learn a certain amount of nodes just to get started and we will be going over all the nodes that you need to get started of course so um but once you've learned and you felt like you've made a couple of games um feel free to go look up all the nodes and see what they do you can just hover over them and then they'll just tell you what they do in basic terms right there see okay you want to hit cancel for now now you're asking yourself, parent node, children node, this is all too much. Some of it is not making sense. Um, I am going to explain in a different term. Now, now, when I first learned about this, I will admit I didn't understand that as well. I came up with a very unique way to understand the node system. And a good way to see it is um, I like to call it the job system. Now, I'm going to be... Uh, I'm going to be going over that in a second. Let's go ahead and construct our scene. So we are node 2D, or we can call ourselves the main boss. And our job system, that's something I've created to help me understand the node system, is we are in charge of making a scene with an image. That is our job, and we need to go ahead and make that happen. So we are going to go ahead and add children, or as I like to say, we're going to go hire some employees. Now the first employee we need to look up and hire is an employee who has the ability to show us a blank, uh, like a, a blank canvas, so that way we can draw our image. So you want to go ahead and hit in the search bar, type up "color rect" right there, and it's already highlighted when we type in "color rect." And there he is, and he and this node has a special ability, and his job description: uh, we can he can summon a colored rectangle. So like I said before, every node has a special ability and that's what this uh, node can do. He can summon a, a, tang a, a blank rectangle and we can do anything out of it. So we hit create and voila, we have a blank, blank rectangle just sitting right there in the corner. That is fantastic. We want it, it to fill up the whole screen. And remember this purple border represents our window so right now he's just only covering a very small percentage if we click and drag this orange that's in the corner it goes and it fills it up it is okay if you go past the purple square that is fine but now voila we got a blank canvas but our job is almost done let's go back and highlight our boss we now need to hire an employee whose special ability is to show an image. So we're going to hit this plus button again. We're going to delete color rect. And now we're going to search on a job search uh, an employee who can do that. So we're going to hit sprite. That's what we're going to type in. And we have two candidates. We have an animated sprite and a sprite. Remember, we only need to hire one of these two. So if we look up animated sprite, his job description says sprite node that can use multiple textures for animation. So if this was the job field and I was reading his resume, he is technically overqualified. <laughs> we can't hire him because we only just want to show one single image and he has the ability to show multiple images and even animate them. That's fantastic, but 
we're not trying to do that. We are just simply trying to get a simple image done. So unfortunately, we're going to pass on you animated sprite. We're going to look up sprite and he does just that general purpose sprite node. He is hired. Let's go ahead and hire him. Hit the create button and voila, we got, we're not seeing anything uh, because that's why we need to tell him to do it. So as the boss, we are going to command him to show us an image. Now this is where the inspector windows come in and the inspector window basically shows you what each node can do. So uh, the color rect, as, uh, let's take a look at color rect, and we're going to look. Now, there is tons of properties here, but we're only going to focus on just the thing we need. And on the first tab here, it shows color. So if we click on the white box, it's going to summon this color bar. Now, if you've ever used Photoshop or anything similar, you are very familiar with what this is. You drag hold and then you drag the bar up here and then you can basically pick any color image i'm going to go for like a turquoise color um there you go and then voila we got our image and we have a color background that's fantastic i'm going to be a little picky but a little dark uh feel free to pick whatever color you want um that looks good maybe a little blue no let's, let's leave it like that there you go no, wait wait there you go okay i'm gonna i'm gonna be in here all day <laughs> okay that's what the inspector does is it gets us to use the node to its full advantage. It gets us to use the node's abilities, the node's job, basically. So if we click on Sprite, we're going to go ahead and we see texture. Once again, there is a bunch of other options. Do not worry about that for now. We're only focused on this first bar texture. Now, there are two ways to go about making this happen, two ways to show an image. Way number one is we will click on this bar and a buttload of <laughs> a lot of options will pop up. And if you go all the way down to load, which is the last one, it will basically summon our file system. And then, you know, the only image we have right now is the logo. You'll simply click, click on that and then voila, it, it gets the job done. Uh, way number two is what I always like to do and a lot of devs like to do too is right here on the bottom underneath the scene tree we have a file system and it, it's, it looks exactly what we just saw right now and we can have access to it uh, we click on the icon image we're going to click and hold and drag all the way into the texture bar going to drop it in there and voila we have an image but hold on He's all the way in the corner and we don't need him in the corner. We need him dead center. That is where the move tool comes in. So by default, we are selected in select mode. But if you go ahead and hit the move tool, we can go ahead and, you know, move him. And there you go. And our job is technically done. Uh, if you're wondering what these other tools do, this is rotate mode. And this is exactly what you're thinking. Uh, control Z to reset. And then we have a scale tool, which basically it does what you're thinking. Uh, it scales the image and makes it very, very large. Uh, we don't need to do that. Um, that is all that we need to cover in terms of what's up here. Don't worry about the rest. You don't need to learn about this right now. I will be going over a couple more of these things. I'll be going over what this is, the smart snap and a grid snap. We'll be going over that in the future episode. But for now, just focus on these four tools here. With that being said, we're going to go back to our select tool and our job is technically done. We have an image and we have a background image. Now, if we hit our play button now hold the phone here we have two play buttons we have a play button that says play and then we have another play button that says play scene now for now go for play scene i will describe what this play button does do not hit it because if you do hit it it's going to give you an option just ignore it backtrack if you accidentally hit it and just go ahead and hit the play scene so we're going to hit the play scene and then it's going to tell us, hey, your scene's not save. So let's just for now, let's just save it. And we're just going to save it. Just going to hit that save button there. And then it's going to run the game and voila. We have our image and we have a background. So that is the basics of the node system. That is stripped down basic of what it is. Again, I am going to go in full blown details and in action. We're going to use more nodes and stuff like that in the future to make our game. Um, so if you didn't pick it up, if you didn't get my example, if you didn't like the whole job system example, you can literally swap out what I said with just parent and child node. And it, it works the same way, honestly. But like I said, I decided to go over uh, and explain in the, in, 
my own unique way is because that's what helped me understand it. And maybe it might help you understand the Node system way more quicker than what is given when you first learn Godot through the website, which is the parent and the child node. Um, but hey, we all learn different ways. So that is it. We, we need to do one more thing before we leave and before we end this first part. We're going to click on res here. Or we're going to go back to our file system. We're going to right click and do new folder. And we're going to uh, title this scenes. Right click again. New folder. Sprites. And then one more time. Right click. New folder. Scripts. And we are basically being organized. That's the beauty of Godot is you get a chance to be organized nice and clean. We have a scenes folder and it does what you're thinking. It can hold scenes. And hey, we have a scene called main boss. Go ahead and click and drag that into the scenes folder. And voila, we're a little more organized. The script will hold all our GD scripts. We'll, um, we'll go ahead and mess with that later on. And uh, the last one is sprites. All of our assets are going to be added onto here. In the next part, we are going to start with doing just that. We're going to add assets. I have pre-made assets for you. We're going to add on to that and we're going to get started. We're going to make a very simple game. Uh, this first video, this first part was just basically explaining the node system and the scene system. If you, if you're still confused, go ahead and comment down below. But like I said before, this isn't the only time I'm going to explain this. I'm going to explain this all over again in the next video. Uh, as we go along and make our game, uh, I do hope you learned something, uh, Go ahead and hit comment if you have any questions. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to have a lot of other feature tutorials. We're going to make more than just this beginner level. I do have another game we're going to create after this beginner series that picks off right where we will leave off of this tutorial series. So you want to make sure you're subscribed because we're going to be making more than just a simple Plinko game. We're going to be doing uh, much, much more. And again, I'm going to provide all the assets for you so you can go ahead and download. My name is Ghostbit. Uh, I will see you on the next video.